Oh, hello, what up? It's John, your movie madman, and I'm back. So, I've got an epic video to show you today. This is one of my, it's one of my favourite franchises, film-wise. It's also one of my favourite TV shows, and they're also some of the best books I've ever read. So, that's three in one here. We're going to be doing book versus film versus TV show, slash book versus TV show. Slash film versus TV show. So there's a lot of verses in there today. Of course you know what I'm talking about. Because you've already clipped on this. Today we are going to be digging into Hannibal Lecter. I've got the box set, obviously, of the first three. And then I've also got Hannibal Rising here as well. We've got Red Dragon. Science of the Lambs and Hannibal as well. So the stories in order, in chronological order, the stories go Hannibal Rising, Red Dragon, Science of the Lambs and Hannibal. So I've got the books, I've got the books, Hannibal Rising, Red Dragon, nice red cover as well, uh, Science of the Lambs. And Hannibal. So, uh, I literally read, I read all four of these during lockdown. Did a lot of reading during lockdown, to be fair. There's also the, uh, the TV show, which is called Hannibal. And we got series one, series two, and series three. They're all very exciting I'm gonna go gonna go into all this bit separately right so how do I start this the film Hannibal Rising versus the book of Hannibal Rising now I remember seeing Hannibal Rising in the cinema and coming out thinking that was a bit po and then I remember watching the film at home and thinking that was a bit po and you know what I read the book I read the book going into the book thinking I've seen the film and, and I thought the film was a bit poo so I'm not sure what to expect from the book but the book is really good I really liked the book and to be fair I haven't re-watched the film since I've read the book so the film of Hannibal Rising isn't isn't my strongest my strongest field because I don't know it very well because I've only seen it like two or three times and I've only read the book once obviously um, well it might not have been obvious I don't know sorry um, but I do remember enjoying the book. It was really good. It was really, it was really detailed when it came to explaining Hannibal's past. Uh, but what it did was, or what I remember about the film is, is that you see the incidents when he's a child at the beginning of the film, whereas in the book, it's kind of like a twist in the book as to what happens to him as a child. So he kind of goes back to it. In his memory all the way through the book and then at the end you find out what actually happened when he was a child and I quite I quite liked that aspect of it there are some deaths in the film that are in the book as well which is good I like that it was a good it was a good interpretation of the film but the book was better because there's more the story that I feel like the the arc of the story was a lot better in the book it was a lot uh, a lot more detail in the book but you're going to get that all right moving on though now out of the four films out of the four films red dragon is my favorite out of the four films and out of the four books red dragon is probably my favorite out of the four books as well um so out of the four films red dragon is also the one that i've seen the most because uh, obviously it's the one that I enjoy the most so I'm going to watch it a bit more uh, so from that aspect of it I loved the book because I'd seen the film so many times I thought the book was great one of the things I really enjoyed about the book was that the the tooth fairy character the character that Ray Fiennes plays in the film the tooth fairy character in the book was so good because there was so much more there was a massive backstory to the character in the book one of the things I 
really liked about reading the book was that all of the bits all of the bits that I enjoy in the film are also in the book but there's more to it in the book so I felt like when I was reading the book I literally felt like I was watching some special extended director's cut version of the film but in book form so that was really good I always find that when I'm reading books I always read books that are based on films that I've seen because then that way when I'm reading the book it helps me picture what's going on in the book because obviously I've seen the films I can put faces to the characters that they're talking about if that makes sense I love doing that with books that's one of the reasons why I'm pretty sure all the books that I have read are books that are based on films there's I don't think there is a book out there where I haven't seen the film first so interesting that but I mean I love I love the film my favorite film one of my favorite performances by Edward Norton one of my favorite performances by Ray Fiennes and I think Hannibal Lecter is one of my favourite characters I've seen Anthony Hopkins play. There is also another version of Red Dragon which was made before all of these films which was called Manhunter which to be fair I thought was really bad. No offence to people that enjoyed Manhunter but I didn't think Manhunter was that good. I didn't think the guy playing Hannibal Lecter was that good and I don't know I think I went in expecting it to be really amazing and I, I didn't think it was very good at all. Uh, but the book, the book is so good. If you enjoy watching the film and you like reading books, then Red Dragon is definitely the way to go to. Next up, we have Silence of the Lambs. Now, I wouldn't say I was the biggest fan of Silence of the Lambs. I don't dislike the film, and I didn't dislike the book. But there is a but there, you see. Like, I think because I enjoy Red Dragon so much, and I probably put Hannibal at my second... I think the Science of the Lambs is 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 more about the thriller slash murder mystery side to it rather than actually being about Hannibal Lecter. Whereas when you watch Hannibal and Red Dragon, there's a lot more to Hannibal Lecter in those two. Apart from all obviously there is in Hannibal in Red Dragon he's he's in prison all the way through in Red Dragon basically. But yeah, I mean I, I enjoyed I enjoyed Silence of the Lambs, it was good. There's a lot of famous scenes in the film. They're all in the book as well. I don't really want to talk about them too much because they're a bit graphic and naughty. But the man, when he says, tells Clarice that he can smell her, that's in that's in the book as well, word for word, as well, which I thought was quite funny. I thought that was just going to be something that was in the film, but that's in the book as well. There's a little bit of an inappropriate scene slightly after that scene in the film. And that's in the book as well, so all in all, very good trans transfer over. Out, out of these two, I'd probably say they were both on par with each other. So out of out of all four of them, I'd probably say that Silence of the Lambs and the film and the book are probably the best to get it right, if that makes sense. Not that the others got it wrong. The others the others are just more detailed, so there was more cut down. If they'd have put all the details from Red Dragon in the film, the film would have been about three hours long. And people would have been like, it's too boring, it's too much, too much detail. But I loved it, I thought it was great. So lastly, well sort of lastly, from the film point of view, we've got the book of Hannibal and the film of Hannibal. I still think they're both great. The book's really long. This is the book that is really long, as you can probably see goes into a lot of detail there were there were a few details in the book that I just kind of switched off and I was just like I really don't care about what's going on right now so from that perspective I might go as far as say the film was better than the book because I was captivated all the way through the film whereas there were bits in the book that just lost me and I felt myself I felt like I was skimming over lines rather than actually reading it and found myself having to go back and reread bits because I'd missed it so it didn't keep my attention but the film did so I know I'm kind of just skipping through because I'm aware that I've got other bits that I want to go into as well moving on to the TV show now Mads Mikkelsen plays Hannibal really well in the TV show um, obviously he had Anthony Hopkins and the guy who played him in Manhunter to live up to and I think he did a really really good job he plays the villain very well. He plays the villain in James Bond really well. Uh, he plays Hannibal Lecter very well. Uh, the way that he keeps 
stitching up characters because uh, people don't know that Hannibal Lecter is a cannibal slash serial killer through a lot of this so it's done very differently to the books um, but this is more this is more of an actual TV series uh, there's different like serial killers going through a show sometimes there's a serial killer per episode and then sometimes the serial killers spread out over a few episodes there's a uh, there's parts of as it gets towards the end of I think as it gets to series three towards the end of series two and all of series three kind of dives in a little bit to the book of Hannibal it also dives into parts of Red Dragon uh, the two fairy killer from Red Dragon the book is also in this series there are parts uh, from Hannibal the film and Hannibal the book that are also in this series as well when they kind of I liked how through series three they kind of mesh together the book of Hannibal and the book of Red Dragon and play them both out at the same time so I thought that was a very very well done as well uh, it's very very arty is the series I tell you that a lot of the a lot of the death scenes like when you see the crime scenes and bodies and stuff like that a lot of it they look like paintings almost they literally look like paintings I don't know how else to describe it some of the bodies some of the bodies that have like been chopped up or whatever a bit gross I tell you it's quite violent I mean it's an 18 and pretty sure most of the episodes are 18s as well it's a very good series based on the characters from the books I think it's one of my favourites it's one I definitely want to go through again so how was that that was a bit bit more of a detailed video for you there I hope that was exciting um, I hope you enjoyed sitting through that and it wasn't too long for you uh, if you could like this video that would be amazing if you could subscribe to the channel too that would be great and I'll see you again soon for some more book versus film as well as some more 4k reviews and I'll be doing I'll be covering other topics as well so got some cool stuff on the way alright see you guys soon alright goodbye